Hey, welcome back. My name is Sushant Sutish and I am your trainer for this AZ500 Azure Security Engineer certification course. In this video, we are going to go through module 3 knowledge check. So without wasting any more time, let's get into it. So let's look at the first question. Which one of the following should not be stored in Azure Key Vault? What are the differences between these items? Select one. It's definitely not key management, secret management, and certificate management. The correct answer is identity management. Azure Key Vault can be used for keys, secrets, and certificates. Keys are cryptographic objects. The Key Vault supports multiple key types and algorithms and enables the use of hardware security modules, or it is known as HSM for high value keys. Secrets provide secure storage for passwords and database connection strings. Certificates are built on top of keys and secrets and add an automated renewal feature. Let's look at question number two. A select group of users must be able to create and delete keys in Key Vault. How should you grant these permission? The correct answer is role-based access control. To create and delete Key Vaults, the management pane uses RBAC, which is role-based access control. For example, you could use a role called Key Vault Contributor. Let's look at the third question. Which of these statements best describes Azure Key Vault's authentication and authorization process? You need to select one. The correct answer is applications and users authenticate to a vault with their Azure Active Directory identities and are authorized to perform actions on all secrets in the vault. Authentication to Key Vault uses Azure Active Directory identities. Access policies are used to provide authorization for actions that apply to every secret in the vault. Let's look at question number four. How does Azure Key Vault help protect your secrets after they have been loaded by your app? Select one. The correct answer is, it doesn't protect your secrets. Secrets are unprotected once they are loaded by your application. Once secrets have been loaded by an app, they are unprotected. Make sure to not log them, store them, or return them in client responses. Let's look at question number five. Your manager wants to know more about software protected keys and hardware protected keys. You discuss which three of the following statements. Select three. So the correct answer is software protected cryptographic operations are performed in software, hardware protected cryptographic operations are performed within the HSM, and only the hardware protected keys offer FIPS 140-2 level 2 assurance. The primary difference besides price with the software protected key is when cryptographic operations are performed. They are done in the software using Azure Compute Services while the HSM protected keys, while the HSM protected keys, the cryptographic operations are performed within the HSM. Let's look at question number six. What method does Microsoft Azure App Service use to obtain credentials for user attempting to access an app? Select one. The correct answer is redirection to a provider endpoint. Microsoft Azure App Service apps redirect requests to an endpoint that signs in users for that provider. The app service can automatically direct all unauthenticated users to the endpoint that signs in users. Question number seven. What type of managed service identities can you create? Select two. The correct answers are system assigned and user assigned. There are two types of managed identities. A system assigned managed identity is enabled directly on an Azure server instance. When the identity is enabled, Azure creates an identity for the instance in the Azure AD tenant that's trusted by the subscription of the instance. Creating an app with a user assigned identity requires that you create the identity and then add its resource identifier to your app configuration. Let's look at question number eight. Your app service application stores page graphics in an Azure storage account. The app needs to authenticate programmatically to the storage account. What should you do? Select one answer. The correct answer is create a managed identity. A managed identity is an Azure AD security principle 
that represents the resource app which is managed identities can be user or system managed let's look at question number nine how does using managed identities for azure resources change the way an app authenticate to azure key vault select one the correct answer is the app gets token from a token service instead of azure active directory when you enable managed identity on your web app Azure activates a separate token granting REST service spe specifically for use by your app. Your app will request tokens from this service instead of Azure Active Directory. Let's look at question number 10. You need to provide a contingent staff employee temporary read-only access to the contents of an Azure storage account container named Media. It is important that you grant access while adhering to the security principle of least privilege. What should you do? And you just need to select one answer. The correct answer is generate a shared access signature token for the container. The SAS or shared access signature can provide a read only access. Let's look at question number 11. Your company has both a development and production environment. The development environment needs time limited access to storage. The production environment needs unrestricted access to storage resources. You need to configure storage access to meet the requirements. What should you do? Each answer presents part of the solution. Select two. The first answer is use shared access signature for the development app. The second answer is use access keys for the production apps. Shared access signature provide a way to provide more granular storage access than access keys. For example, you can limit access to read only and you can limit the services and types of resources. Shared access signatures can be configured for the specific amount of time, which meets this scenario's requirements. Access keys provide unrestricted access to the storage resources, which is the requirement for the production app in this scenario. Let's look at question number 12. Your company is being audited. It is not known how long the audit will take, but during that time, files must not change or removed it is okay to read or create new files what should you do select two each correct answer is required for the solution the first correct answer is add legal hold retention policy to the blob container the second option is identify a tag for the items that are being protected if the retention interval is not known users can set legal holds to store immutable data until the legal hold is cleared. When a legal hold policy is set, blobs can be created and read, but not modified or deleted. Each legal hold is associated with a user defined alphanumeric tag such as case ID, event name, etc., that is used as an identifier string. Let's look at question number 13. You are configuring an Azure file share for the business group. Which of the following is not true? Select one. The correct answer is Azure files can use RBAC for share level or directory file permissions. Only share level permission can use RBAC. Let's look at question number 14. You are configuring secure transfer required. Your compliance office wants to know more about this feature. You provide all the following information except which one. The correct answer is request to storage can be HTTPS or HTTP. When secure transfer required is enabled, all requests must be HTTPS. Let's look at question number 15. Your SQL database administrator has recently read about SQL injection attacks. They ask you what can be done to minimize the risk of this type of attack. You suggest implementing which of the following features. The correct answer is advanced threat protection. Advanced Threat Protection is an advanced data security feature for databases. The feature provides alerts when a potential attack like SQL injunction occurs. Question number 16. Your organization provides a help desk for its customers. Service representatives need to identify callers using the last four numbers of their credit card. You need to ensure the complete credit card number is not fully exposed to the service representatives. Which of the following feature do you implement? The correct answer is dynamic data masking. Dynamic data masking limits sensitive data exposure by masking it to non-privileged users. 
This feature enables customers to designate how much of the sensitive data is to reveal. Let's look at question number 17. Your organization auditors need to be assured that sensitive database data always remains encrypted at rest, in transit, and in use. You assure the auditors this is being done because you have configured which feature. The feature you're looking for is called Always Encrypted. Always Encrypted helps protect sensitive data at rest on the server during movement between client and server and while the data is in use. Always Encrypted ensures that sensitive data never appears as plain text inside the database system. After you configure data encryption, only client applications or app servers that have access to the keys can access plain text data. Let's look at question number 18. You have an app service web application uses a SQL database. Users need to authenticate to the database with their Azure AD credentials. You perform all the following tasks except which one? The correct answer is create user in the master DB. You could not create users in the master DB. Instead, contained user should be created on each database. Let's look at the last question. What type of firewall rule can you configure for the Azure SQL database? Select two. The first answer is server level firewall rule and the second answer is database level firewall rules. Server level IP firewall rule enables client to access your entire Azure SQL database. That is all the database within the same SQL database server. These rules are stored in the master database. Database level IP firewall rules enable clients to access certain secure databases within the same SQL database server. You can create these rules for each database, including the master database, and they are stored in the individual databases. So we just finished module three knowledge check. In the next video, we are starting a brand new module, which is module four. And the first lesson is all about Azure Monitor. So I will see you in the next one. Till then, take care.